Assista agora a mais um lançamento com a qualidade Vídeo 3. There is a certain amount of danger in, in motor racing. Formula One uh, is part of motor racing, you know. Um, so anytime you go driving, testing or racing, you are exposed to some risks. There are calculated risks and there are unexpected situations that can happen. And you can be gone just in a fraction of a second. So you realize that uh, you're nobody. Suddenly you're nobody, and your life can be can have an end. Suddenly, this is part of your life, and you either face it in a in a professional, in a cool manner, or you just drop it, you just leave it, and don't do it anymore, really. And I happen to like too much what I do. To, to just drop it. I can't drop it. It's, it's part of my life. Racing. Competing is in my blood. It's part of me. It's part of my life. I've been doing it all my life. And uh, it stands up before anything else.
O Ayrton, quando criança, sempre foi muitíssimo agitado. O tempo todo ele se mexia, estava fazendo coisas, correndo para lá, para cá, caía muito, machucava as pernas, estava sempre com um galo na cabeça. Minha mãe achava que ele tinha algum problema na cabeça, queria levá-lo ao médico para ver se realmente... Porque ele não parava nunca, ele estava sempre em movimento, sempre em movimento. Mas esse era a energia, né? Ele tinha muita energia para para gastar e, e na verdade depois disso tudo ele canalizou para corrida, né? Toda essa força, essa impulsividade, essa agressividade ele canalizou para corrida. Ao lado dessa faceta dele sempre agitada, movimentada e tal, ele era uma criança super carinhosa e tinha um coração de ouro. Tudo que ele tinha ele dava, corrente de ouro ele dava para namorada. Ele fazia as coisas assim super de de coração. Então, eram dois lados que ele sempre apresentou durante a vida dele de pequeno. Ele sempre estava com um carrinho na mão, sempre brincando, ou, ou sentado dentro de algum carro, de algum carrinho, ou com algum carrinho na mão. Então, ele fazia o barulho do carro, a brecada do carro, então ele fazia hum, 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 para dizer que o carro estava saindo. Depois ele fazia assim para fazer que o carro estava parando. E quando ia comprar sapato para ele, na, na loja de sapatos, ele punha o sapato no pé, ele preferia geralmente botinhas. E ele saía correndo na loja e aí dava uma brecada. Aí dava uma brecadinha de lado, se brecava, ele gostava do sapato. Mãe, pode comprar esse sapato. Se não brecava, ele não queria levar o sapato de jeito nenhum. <risos> Ele, a gente pegava o um carrinho de Rolemã, fazia de três, quatro modelos de carrinho. Tinha uma técnica aí, carrinho com uma roda, com três rodas, com quatro rodas. Aí ficava um naquela esquina, um naquela esquina. Lá embaixo a gente se trancava também. E, e descia aqui até cansar. Ficava dias e dias andando de carrinho de Rolemã. Tava de bobeira à tarde e tal, não tinha o que fazer. Carrinho de Rolemã. Carrinho de Rolemã tomava uns tombas, se estrupiava, batia lá, capotava. E, e, e depois os cartos também, né? O Ayrton morava nessa casa. Uh, e desde os quatro anos, o seu Milton, pai dele, deu um cato para ele, com motorzinho de bomba d'água. Uh, e aqui ele montava, aqui ele ligava, aí andávamos nessa área, né, nessa praça. E numa época em que isso aqui era, era muito tranquilo, né? Eram duas horas andando, uma hora andando, andando. Isso era uma constante. A personalidade dele era diferente. Eu acho que se alguém nasceu para fazer isso, era ele. Chegava do colégio, começava a mexer em kart, ou então ia para Interlagos, que nem o Roberto falou, treinava, todo, todo dia que treinava, direto. O cara ia para Interlagos direto. Aí treinava, chegava em casa, desmontava o kart inteirinho, limpava, polia, encerava, pintava, arrumava, e ficava numa pecinha, às vezes uma, duas horas. Eu não tinha paciência, eu falava, você fica arrumando essa peça, daqui uma hora eu volto. Porque ele ficava, às vezes, duas, três horas arrumando um negócio no freio lá para virar uma curva melhor ou colocar um plástico melhor, alguma coisa. Insistia mesmo até, talvez, achar a perfeição, né? Então, na minha opinião, tudo que fez o Ayrton ser o que ele é, era ele mesmo, como pessoa assim, ele sempre foi muito a fundo em tudo que ele quis, insistia, insistia, insistia e, lógico, que gostava. <música> Fantastic memories from it. Very good, uh, very good times I had, and throughout my my experience with go karts, be here in Brazil or when I went to Europe or Japan, and basically, the go kart has been from four years old to 21. So. Most part of my life I've been racing go karts. And it was through go karts that I had the opportunity to become a professional uh, racing driver and go through all the other formulas to eventually get to Formula One. And the experience I learned in go kart 
it still counts today in many different times when I'm driving my Formula One. And it's something that uh, I keep still a great passion for it. Uh, today I still play with go-karts. I have my own racing circuit in my farm in Brazil. Very nice, 1,000 meters long, 8 meters wide. I play there with my young nephew and some friends. So I have only good memories from go-karts. They push very hard. They go very, they go pretty fast. Uh, they have also their, their engines really going well. They pull very strong. That's fun. I'm gonna try some other go karts. See if I find a better one. <laughs> When I was eight or nine, I already had a proper go-kart, which was big for me. I was so small and light, so my go-kart was fast. I was so light compared to other people. And I used to run with other people, just playing at weekends. And we were outside Sao Paulo. Suddenly there were so many people playing there with go-karts that they decided to organize a small race. They asked my father if he would allow me to also participate. Because I was eight or nine, there were guys with 20, 25, 18. And my father was a bit scared of us. And he eventually said okay. And the starting, the grid position was established by drawing a piece of paper inside the helmet. So they put all the numbers there, grid position. And I was, because I was the little one, they told me, you take the first one the first one to choose, take the number, and I took number one. So I was on pole position. Uh, and, and that was really my first taste of competition. But it was only a, a game. And I remember I led 35 laps out of 40, because my go-kart was too fast for them. I was big advantage being light. And eventually I was, the last five laps I was second or third. And the guy behind me, who was much faster than me on the corners, could not overtake me on the straight. Eventually, he hit me from the back and I went off the circuit. And uh, so I didn't finish, but uh, it was good fun, good, uh, good memories. In what I've been doing, go karts when I was very young, or then racing cars in Europe, then Formula One. Uh, the goal, the objective is, has been always one. You change the places and, and the people and the categories, but the main motivation has been always to be the first, to win, to be the fastest. Um, it's the best motivation, if not the, the only one, the real motivation to do my profession that keep you strong, keep you um, happy, because it's a big challenge. It is difficult, of course, so when you get it, it's an uh, extraordinary feeling. When he moved here, we didn't have a ping pong, he already had a ping pong. Então a gente ficava jogando ping-pong direto, e eu ganhava dele, muitas vezes, né? Não tinha jeito, se ganhava dele, acabava o jogo, e ele ficava treinando com todos os vizinhos aí, até chegar um ponto que ele jogava mais, melhor que eu, e aí só ganhava de mim. Em tudo, quase, na, na minha vida, assim, tudo que eu participei com a Ayrton, eu perdia. Any sportsman, or Formula One driver specifically, must have deep inside a, a very strong feeling about competition because we uh, get used with this with the system with the attitude of competing and trying to win 
So for instance, then you try to play ping pongy. You try to win. Okay, in a different way, you enjoy it more, but it's competition. And the competition world or feeling is right inside of us, I think. And that makes difference. <laughs> Onde ele passava, acontecia encrencas. Né? Aliás, depois na Fórmula 1, ele foi chamado campeão das encrencas, porque onde ele aparecia, ficava aquele tumulto, aquela coisa toda em volta. E de pequeno, a mesma coisa. E muitas vezes ele arrumava briga fora da escola, na saída da escola, e eu ia lá tentar apartar a briga, defendê-lo. Mas no fim, eu apanhava junto, então eu desisti, deixei ele <risos> brincar e, e brigar sozinho. <risos> Entramos a la carrera para ganar. No, había, no existía enemigo para él, ni concurrente. Le entraba para ganar. Le decía, da una manera a ver si puede. Que no, para mí es primer lugar. I remember after the race I won in Yeslo when uh, I passed him on the last lap. Um, the, the next day, on the Monday at the hotel, he was, he was seriously pissed off. He was very, very unhappy. And uh, I was playing around my mechanic near the pool. And he just appeared out of nowhere and pushed me into the pool. And then he started smiling. He, was, he seemed to make him happy. That he'd, uh, I think all the good guys hate to be beaten. You can't be good unless it hurts to be beaten. So, but he had that as much, maybe more than, than, than most of us. some very aggressive races. Alton Park, I remember well, when his car landed on top of mine and I couldn't get out of my car. We were, we were both angry. Uh, Snetterton, he was very angry with me in Snetterton, my home track. Um, we touched down the back straight. I was on pole, he was trying to pass me. And uh, we touched and his car went into the air. And it all got a bit out of control, but then then we had to calm it down a little bit and uh, it ended up very close. When you're young and you're relatively inexperienced, you don't know what the limit is. Uh, we were both trying to find the limit at that time. Sena, it was a pilot. I had the possibility to run with him. It was nice, because for the beginning, Il fallait absolument pas penser qu'il allait faire une erreur pour le passer. Et puis surtout, c'est pas un gars qui faisait une crasse. C'était, euh, euh, c'était, bien quoi. Donc, euh, on a, on a des, des objets dangereux dans les mains. Euh, moi, je me souviens euh, euh, aussi bien en Espagne, aussi bien à Phoenix euh, qu'à qu'au Canada, d'être pratiquement assis avec lui dans la voiture parce qu'on était euh, ponton contre ponton, mais sans aucun problème. Et, et, et bon, c'est sympa.
It was very exciting. It was enjoyable because I think it was a, a clean fight and uh, exciting one, right on the limit. And in those situations is where I, I, got, I get my enjoyment from my profession. The fact that I am aggressive, I am uh, very strong about my my passion, my profession, uh, brings me some difficulties from time to time. It's in my personality, first of all, and of course I have developed it throughout my life, and I have applied it in motor racing. So many times it's one of my qualities. Sometimes it has cost me a race or has cost me some good result, but this is my characteristic, this is my personality, and uh, that's what I am. Mm -hmm. The main thing is to be yourself and not allow people to disturb you, to be different because they want you to be different. You gotta be yourself. Some people may like you, some people dislike you. You're just a human being, like everybody. You fail sometimes, you succeed some others. The main purpose is to succeed, of course. But uh, many times it's through a mistake, due to your own personality or your own, your own character, or interference that you get on the way, that you learn. And the main thing is to make sure you learn through your mistakes and get better. El estilo se va, se va cumpliendo con el tiempo. Nadie nació sabiendo. Y al principio, cuando yo corría, todo lo agarraba fuerte. Hasta me lastimaba las manos. Después comprendí que no era necesario. Con los dedos se manejaba mejor. Y que todo se va haciendo con el tiempo. Nadie nació sabiendo. There is so much to learn and to do, I believe, that for me, the only way to be stronger and to be more self-confident that I'm doing really the maximum that I can do under those circumstances is by concentrating and trying to remember every single detail regarding that situation and to imagine any future problems and therefore get it as right as possible. And you develop it through the year, through the time you develop. It. I think the combination of his intelligence, uh, his raw ability was one of the biggest things that impressed me, and his total ability to concentrate when he's in that car, whether it's testing, qualifying or racing, to me was like a mobile computer. He could recall test days, he could do this, and it really got me G'd up more to look into every fine detail because I felt he was putting in 110% and we were putting in 100% so we went to 110% as well. He was a, a young guy when he came to us, younger than most of our drivers had been, um, but with an amazing maturity and a, a very very single-minded, um, very determined. Racing was his career and he was going to be the best. We'd obviously worked with a number of drivers over the years um, and we expected Ayrton to come with us, albeit with a, a very high reputation, but we expected him to come to us as a relative newcomer and needing training, etc. And that just wasn't the case. I mean, the, the guy was technically superb from day one. When I first came to Formula One in 84, I was starting. So I had so much to learn and to achieve that anything, any good result was 
a progress, was a motivation. Then I changed to a bigger team, to Lotus, and I still went up and up and up. And I'm still doing it. So even when I have some problems, I look always to the next race. Because maybe one race I have no chance, but next one or the next five will be good against one bad one. So you got to try to make the numbers bigger and bigger. His approach was basically to sit down with the engineers, confirm that things he was expecting to be done to the cars had been done, talking about the setup. He'd spend a lot of time on tires because in those days there were choices of tires. Um, he would work out a program in conjunction with the engineers and myself of what we wanted to try during practice, how we wanted to try it, when we wanted to run full tanks, how many laps we would do on this, that and the other. And then it would flow from there. When I started with them, I didn't have the car, the tires were not flat, right, square. Yeah. They were a bit round, so I was going like this, you know. Ayrton s'intéressait énormément au moteur. Dès le début de sa coopération avec nous, il avait passé beaucoup de temps avec moi-même, avec Bruno Mauduit, pour comprendre comment fonctionnait ce moteur, pour comprendre quels étaient les paramètres importants qui régissaient le fonctionnement du moteur, les températures, les régimes, la pression de suralimentation, et comment ces, ces paramètres interréagissaient les uns par rapport aux autres, ce qui est quand même quelque chose de difficile à comprendre. Mais il avait bien saisi. C'était un garçon qui comprenait facilement, qui avait des, des dialogues euh, aisés, je dirais, avec les techniciens, euh, avec les, les ingénieurs. Et il s'était tellement investi dans le développement de ce moteur que c'était un peu son moteur. Et pour nous, c'était fascinant, mais extrêmement productif. At low rev, 9 to 10 or 10. Yeah, 9 to 10 especially, I don't get the boost. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Et ce qui nous a apporté, nous, à l'époque, c'était euh, la façon de nous guider dans les développements à faire sur, euh, sur le moteur. C'est-à-dire que lui, il faisait des choix en nous disant « ça, c'est bien, ça, c'est pas bien » et il faudrait plutôt travailler dans cette voie-là et pas dans cette voie-là. Et on s'est rendu compte qu'il ne s'est jamais trompé, il nous a toujours emmenés dans les bonnes directions en nous guidant parfaitement. Il était très porté sur les turbos et euh, d'ailleurs il, il était tellement porté dessus que il est, moi je l'ai vérifié un par un et lui il était toujours derrière moi quand je l'ai vérifié, il avait même un pied à coulisses des fois pour être sûr qu'on ne qu l'embrouille pas et euh, bon ça c'est son tempérament, je veux dire, il contrôle tout, 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 il est sans arrière derrière les gens, il essaye de comprendre en même temps donc c'est pour ça qu'il essaye de tout contrôler avec toi, de tout comprendre. Euh, je crois que le pire c'était de le rencontrer à l'hôtel le soir quand on rentrait à 11h et qu'on a eu qu'une envie c'est de se coucher et qu'on refaisait encore deux séances d'essai dans un fauteuil euh, en faisant 15 tours de circuit quoi. It's not fun after all. Together with the fun you have to apply yourself, you have to put up with things that not, not always are very nice. But uh, it's part of it. And uh, I believe in the ability of focusing strongly in something then you're able to extract even more out of it. It's been like this all my life. And it's been only a question of improving it and learning more and more. And there is almost no end. As you go through, you just keep finding more and more. It's very interesting. It's fascinating. things that was most awe-inspiring about him as a race driver was his ability somehow to detach his mind from the physical requirements of driving the car and those physical requirements are very high the G loads the physical strength involved in turning the wheel the braking and so forth and so on but somehow he managed to separate his mind from those actions with the result that his mind was fully functional even on a pole position lap and he could come back and he could recall it in the most minute detail 
And the engineers from Renault and subsequently Honda were absolutely aghast because what he told them was what the printout on the data logger was showing. The car is the extension of you. It's the extension of your body because you there, you are tight as part of it. And as, as more part of it you can be and you can feel, more sensitive you be to the actions and reactions and of it and therefore better you are going to exploit it is the bodywork that gets the airflow through and gets the aerodynamics to work well is the strength of the chassis that will save you from accidents it's the power of the engine that will power you forward. It's the ability of the brakes to stop you. It's the suspension movements that are going to absorb the bumps and the vibrations of engine, road, tires. The tires are going to roll you forward smoothly. Will give you the grip to stop if you need to stop quick. Put the go forward if you need to go forward quickly. Turn quick. I could describe so many things about it, so many details, but uh, you are part of it, and more you can be part of it, more you can be one, one unique thing, uh, for sure better you do. d'exigence était telle qu'il attirait et drainait vers lui euh, toutes les forces vives d'une équipe, qu'elle soit technique ou autre, à l'intérieur. Et les ressources, finalement, d'une équipe comme, euh, comme Lotus, c'est pas très grande, malgré tout, à l'époque. Et la carrure du personnage, l'importance du personnage, ont fait qu'il a pompé cette équipe, mais littéralement, il l'a vidé de ses forces. because he's so hard on himself that it's easy to uh, accept that he's hard on the team. But um, we have an environment in which everybody contributes. And uh, what Ayrton is given the opportunity to do throughout the year and at critical milestones in the programs is to contribute. And uh, nobody makes any demands. Everybody just contributes, pushes, uh, we push on each other to improve the, just the complete performance. The period in which uh, Ayrton and uh, Alan drove together was a challenge uh, that I gladly accepted because the benefits of having them together in the same team uh, vastly outweighed uh, the disadvantages. McLaren est la seule équipe, je crois, à pouvoir euh, se vanter d'avoir euh, souvent eu deux, deux numéro un, euh, à égalité de chance, aussi bien sur le plan de matériel que sur le plan euh, euh, psychologique, ça c'est très important. Et puis, euh, bon, moi je vais l'aider à, à être bien dans sa peau, à s'intégrer à l'équipe. Il n'a jamais été avec un coéquipier qui arrive vite. Et donc, euh, bien entendu, il a l'avantage de, de l'âge, de la motivation peut-être. Et euh, moi, de, de mon côté, j'ai l'expérience, j'ai le fait d'être très bien dans cette équipe. Et j'ai mon mot à dire. Donc, euh, on va essayer de faire la meilleure équipe possible, de travailler le mieux possible pour avoir la meilleure voiture. Et si on a la meilleure voiture et qu'on qu met devant, eh bien, à ce moment-là, on se battra sur le plan sportif l'un contre l'autre, peut-être pour gagner le championnat. C'est la seule chose que, que l'on peut espérer. Everything is new to me, so I have to learn quite a bit, technically and personally, with everybody, every team member. But um, I'm finding, I'm finding. Uh, well inside the, this environment. When Ayrton first drove for McLaren, he, he, the biggest man in the, at the time was Alain Prost. He was number one in the sport, so for Ayrton, he was the man that he wanted to emulate, and he eventually was the man that he wanted to beat. So finally, he was driving the same car as Prost on the same team. <laughs> I 
think you should, where if somebody is doing something good, whether he's together with you or not, if you are able to admire, you probably will be able to improve and to learn from that to make yourself better. If you're not able to admire somebody doing something good because it's just com competing with you, you, you'll be throwing away a possibility of improving yourself. Il y a deux sortes de, de concurrents. Il y a l'adversaire hein, qui est dans une autre équipe et il y a le coéquipier qui est aussi lui un concurrent. C'est souvent et c'est souvent celui-là le plus redoutable car euh, c'est la seule, euh, c'est les talons, c'est la, la seule manière de vous étalonner par rapport à un autre pilote puisque c'est celui qui conduit la même voiture. Ayrton starting to get close to him, then he starting to qualify quicker than uh, Prost, and then he start fighting neck and neck, but it was a fantastic year. I think we really enjoyed very much that first year with both of them, because even I think the public themselves were not uh, cheated. Okay, McLaren won everything, but they knew that uh, they were going to watch the best two racing drivers in the world. for the first time in his career the, the car able to be world champion and uh, he does not want to let uh, his chance I mean going away that's normal and then uh, he's going to what push about on. you what about you uh, it's a little bit different <laughs> little bit, I don't, so you're gonna I let it no. let it go I have a little bit uh, more pressure than uh, I mean you put me more pressure <laughs> <laughs>